Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. My name is Fern and today I'm going to be talking all about my Hoya care tips, tricks, and wisdom that I have gathered over the past couple of years of growing Hoya. So this video was very highly requested after I posted my Hoya collection video. I will leave that linked if you're interested. I go over all of the types of Hoya that I'm currently growing in my home. I think that I have about 17 different types. Okay, so before we get into the care tips, I would like to mention today's video sponsor, which is so exciting. So today's sponsor is Govi. So Govi makes these digital hygrometers slash thermometers. So this is basically a device that tells me the temperature in the room that it's in and the percentage of humidity which obviously both of those are very important to monitor while growing houseplants so they actually sent me a few different models which was so nice of them and i will tell you guys what is unique and cool about these guys okay so like i said govi has various different models that you can choose from they have some that are these lcd screen types in different sizes and then they also have some that are just like little squares that just have the sensor no screen and it is all actually integrated with your phone so all all of these devices are actually Bluetooth integrated, which is so cool. So you can view the current temperature and humidity, and you can also view the trends. And a feature that I thought was really cool is that you can actually set it to alert you when the humidity or temperature goes out of a certain range that you've set. So for mine, I've set it so that it will send me an alert when my humidity is below 50% or over 80% because that is the range that I want to keep my houseplants within and I am going to start to get a little worried when it goes either below or above that. So I just think it's so cool to be able to view it and to track it and view everything on your phone and the app is really easy to use as well. I also think it's cool that they have so many different sizes available and I really like just the little square sensor versions and I plan to use that when I create a glass cabinet greenhouse which is a project I would like to take on this winter but I think it'd be perfect for that and they also have a highly advanced sensor so they're really accurate and I wouldn't worry about my plants in there. So yeah so far I think that these devices are so cool I highly recommend and they're actually quite an affordable price point as well as pleasantly surprised. So I will leave a link to Gobi down below so you guys can go check them out if you're interested. Okay, so now onto the Hoyas. So Hoyas are also commonly called wax plants and this is because most of them have a thick, more succulent, shiny leaf. I actually have a good example of that right here. So this is my Hoya Puba Calyx. So as you can see, it has these kind of quintessential Hoya thick, waxy leaves. And this is a really good example of what a traditional Hoya leaf looks like. So for the most part, the care of Hoyas is very similar between the different types. However, of course, there are some exceptions. There is always an exception to the rule, but in general, these tips can be applied to most Hoyas. Oh, I did also want to make a disclaimer that this is all just based on my experience and what works well for me. Of course, there are multiple different ways to do something and what works for me might not work for you. So yeah, take everything with a grain of salt. Okay, so the first topic that I'm going to cover is lighting, which as with most plants is a very important factor in the health of your plants. So my Hoya tend to love very bright light. I am tempted to say bright indirect light for safety's sake, but some of my Hoya do enjoy direct sunlight. And I'm just saying that because that works for my Hoya but I live somewhere where the sun is not super strong a lot of the year. I grow almost all my Hoya either in south facing windows or under my Mars Hydro grow lights. So they are receiving very bright and quite direct light a lot of the time, but there is always the possibility of burn and some of them definitely burn more easily than others. Specifically my Hoya Carii variegated, variegata, Hoya Carii albomarginata, I don't even know what it's called. My variegated Hoya Carii. <laughs> the white parts of her leaf will burn like that so easily. I swear, even if she just gets a little bit of sun, like she is burning to a crisp. 
and it is very annoying <laughs> but honestly most of my other hoya i have not had a problem with i have not burned them i did have a, an instance where my hoya carnosa was kind of getting a little bit bleached out looking from being under my mars hydro grow light for about six months so i just moved it to a lower shelf just to get some of that dark green back into its leaves so really you can experiment monitor things see how it's going see what type of lighting they like but in general hoya are plants that like bright light they are honestly very easy and forgiving plants in my experience even if you give it a period of low light i think it will be fine but just the brighter the better oh i did also want to mention that some hoya change color with sun exposure which is commonly referred to as sun stressing and it's where the leaves turn a really pretty dark pinky color and a lot of people will purposely leave their hoya in the sun to get this kind of sun stress look so there is sun stressing and there's also sun damage which is less cosmetically appealing and that is what is on my Hoya obovada so it basically has a bunch of black dots on the back of the leaves and that is just some sun damage it's not hurting the plant but it's just not super pleasing to the eye so they're kind of a plant that can change a little bit with different light exposure okay on to watering so most of my hoya are very drought tolerant because they do have those more thick succulent leaves which is nice because i do not have to water them super often of course there are always exceptions um some of my thirstier hoya are hoya bella polyneura linearis those are all hoya that i don't want to let get too dry but for the most part i can kind of neglect my hoya a little bit when it comes to watering and it is also extremely easy to tell when they are thirsty because their leaves will get very soft and bendy so when i'm checking for example my crimson queen or my carnosa green i will just give their leaves a little squeeze and i like to check the more mature ones near the top of the plant because the younger leaves tend to just be more soft in general so i feel like you can get like a really accurate squeeze test on the top leaves this is a common way to check if your plant is thirsty for many succulent type plants like string of hearts my bear paw things like that i always just squeeze them to check out the situation and even my hoya that aren't super succulenty like my hoya polyneura the leaves will just get soft and floppy i don't really squeeze it but i can just feel that it's really soft and it's just kind of like lost all of its firmness so I can tell that it's thirsty then. Also, I just use regular tap water. This is a question that I get sometimes and it really is dependent on your city. There might be different levels of minerals and chlorine and stuff like that in the water. But where I live, I water all of my house plants with just regular tap water and I don't do anything special to it and they all seem pretty happy with it. So I guess I'm just lucky that way. Okay, so fertilization. This is something that is kind of different for Hoyas versus other plants because Hoyas can actually absorb nutrients through their leaves, which is really fun because I get to spray them with this orchid mist. Um, so this is by miracle Grow. This is actually an orchid plant food mist and I spritz all of my Hoyas with this all over their leaves and a little bit on the soil and it works really well for them i'm not sure who like discovered this and started this i see a lot of people use this stuff for their hoya i honestly think that i learned this trick from a becca de la plants video like a long time ago and ever since i watched that i've been using this and i see tons of people use it so and it's also really fun to do so yeah i do water them sometimes with my regular fertilizers which are these guys here which you've probably seen a million times in my videos now it's just um regular liquid miracle grow all-purpose fertilizer mixed with super thrive I use these guys while watering pretty much all of my plants so i also use that on my hoyas but i don't do it super consistently because i use the orchid fertilizer um i just kind of like do it sometimes most of the time i just water them with plain water and no fer fertilizer because i try to keep up with the orchid mist but yeah i do do like a combo so just take that as you will i'm sure that either method either route is you know going to be helpful for your hoya okay so the next topic i'm going to talk about is humidity and i tend to keep most of my house plants in the 60s like around 60 percent 63 percent humidity what is it right now 62 percent 
so um yeah that's just like in general what i like to keep my space for my plants and they all seem to do really well i've never had a humidity issue with my hoya that i'm aware of really they aren't really the type of plants to crisp up or anything like that if anything i think maybe the new growth would fall off or something like that if it was super dry i know that they do prefer higher humidity but in my experience they don't really complain if they don't get super high humidity which i'm assuming is because they have that really like hearty thicker leaf but yeah humidity just hasn't really been a big issue for me with hoya so i just wanted to talk a little bit about their growth and just some things that are unique to them so hoya tend to put out really long tendrils um i will show you again on this guy you can already see but you can see that they put out these really long vines or runners and they are a little bit crazy they like to grab onto things they will wrap around like if he doesn't live in this spot but if he did he could wrap around this post they will pretty much grab onto anything that they can and um, secure onto there and then they will put out leaves along their vines so I just want to let you know not to cut off the vines because when I was a new plant mom, I cut off the vines of my Hoya and just don't do that because this is, this is where they're going to put out their leaves. You can see this is a new leaf right here. And also when your Hoya are putting out a new leaf, try to not touch them because they are very delicate. Hoya leaves will fall off super easily if you accidentally knock them and it's so frustrating when you do knock them off so be very gentle with the new growth oh and i did also want to mention about peduncles so hoyas are also like famously known for their beautiful blooms they put out these little like jelly looking flower blooms they look like little pieces of candy they're so cute and different types have different smells it's really exciting when they bloom a couple of mine actually have blooms starting right now but they, the blooms come from little peduncles, which just looks like a little kind of like cluster thing that your Hoya will put out. And then eventually flowers will bloom off of that. So if you see anything like that growing on your Hoya, just leave it because it, was, it, because it will probably put out a bloom from that spot. And then last but not least, I am going to talk a little bit about propagation. In my experience, Hoya have been super easy to propagate. Um, it's really just a matter of snipping. And as long as you have a node, you can propagate in water or in sphagnum moss which has been the route that I've been going lately I love just throwing things into my moss prop box and just kind of leaving it be and I just make sure to mist it every so often make sure that it stays really moist and I open the lid once a day and just kind of like air it out a little bit fan it out a little bit my moss box that I have right now doesn't like the lid doesn't fully secure so I do need to miss it every every few days um, because it does lose some of that moisture through the cracks in the lid but yeah really all I do is take a piece snip it off and then I like to leave it out just set it out on the counter for a couple of hours just so it can callus over Hoyas do tend to have like this milky liquid stuff that will come out too so I just like to let it callus over and dry off before I either pop it into water or pop it into a moss prop box and you can see the nodes look like little bumps along the vine so as long as you have that that is where it will shoot out roots and i really have never had a problem um propagating my hoya i haven't done like a super vast amount of types but the ones that i have tried to propagate have gone really well oh yes i actually have like a stick propagation that is my hoya fungi it was sent to me by courtney it lost its only leaf and i was just left with a stick no roots or anything so i decided to throw it into a moss prop box and i actually checked on it the other day and it has a tiny leaf coming in and i can't believe it i'm so freaking excited about it because i love that hoya so much so yeah i just like i can't believe that it's actually growing it's so crazy to me so okay and then the last couple of odds and ends that i just wanted to mention is the type of pots that i keep my hoya in which is basically any pot i have hoya that are in plastic such as my 
Crimson Queen there and my Hoya Carnosa Green. Um, and because they're in plastic, I really only have to water those guys every one to two months. And it's easy because I can really tell when they need to be watered, like I was saying. Another type of pot that I love to pot my Hoyas in is Terracotta, just because I really love the look of it. And most of them aren't super thirsty plants, so Terracotta works really well for most of them. And I do also have a lot of my Hoya in like the plastic orchid pot situation just because I like to watch the roots grow and I don't know, I kind of went through an orchid pot phase. So yeah, really uh, the moral of the story is that any type of pots can work for a Hoya in my experience. And then the last thing that I quickly wanted to mention is pests which I actually don't really have much to mention about pests, which is nice. Like, knock on wood, I haven't really had pests on my Hoya. They don't seem to really attract spider mites. I know some people have problems with mealybugs on their Hoya. I have never had mealybugs on my Hoya, so uh, let's hope that I don't have to deal with that because... Um, yes, I did have mealybugs on a string of pearls once and I just ended up tossing it because it was just such a nuisance. So yes, they seem to be pretty pest resistant in my experience. So let's just hope that that continues for me. Okay, I think that was everything. Sorry, that was a lot of just like rattling off information. <laughs> um, I hope that you stayed with me throughout this whole video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate your support so, so much. You don't even know how much I appreciate it. Um, leave me a comment below. I love chatting with you guys. I respond to, I try to respond to every single comment. Also leave this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know which plant you would like me to do a care video for next. And what else? Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you are not yet. And I think that is it. Oh, and don't forget to check out Gobi as well. I will have them linked in the description box. And yeah, I think that is it for today's video. Okay, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.